One of the biggest complaints that you'll hear from Roland V-Drums users is that they sound kind of fake. If you were to ask about online, you'll be told that's because they're not real drum samples. They're synthesised, they're modelled, however you want to describe them. Now, I don't claim to know exactly how Roland's sounds work, so take this with a pinch of salt. But as I understand it, Roland modules do use samples, however they might be heavily affected or chopped up, so that they can utilise the on board parameter changes. That's a whole can of worms for a different day though. What I'm going to do in this video is effectively replace the internal sounds of a Roland module with better ones to find out how a Roland module could sound. Just a quick disclaimer, all of the VSTs that are used in this video have been sent to me to try out at some point by the companies that make them, but not under any condition and this is not a sponsored video. Now obviously better is subjective, but more importantly than that, no I haven't hacked apart my module and put new sounds inside. So how am I getting drum software, acoustic drums or my voice into my Roland TD50X? When you hook up any current generation Roland module to a computer via USB cable in vendor mode, the module can be used as an audio interface. This lets you send the internal audio out to a digital audio workstation or DAW to record, as well as send audio from your computer back to your module. Different modules can send different numbers of audio channels, but the TD50X goes further. It has an additional mode that none of the others have, even the original TD50 software. By swapping the audio routing setting from normal to pad direct in, you can actually choose to route the audio from your computer into the instrument channels on the module. Now this isn't a tutorial so I'm not going to get into the fine details, but in this example I've gone through and matched up the individual instrument outputs from Soundworks to the corresponding instrument channels on my TD50X. Now the module treats this audio as if it's internal, and I can use a bunch of the onboard settings to manipulate the sound. This gives us a pretty accurate indication of what a Roland module could sound like if it had a full suite of multi-layer samples on board.
There are some limitations to this that aren't one-to-one -one with Roland's onboard sounds. For example, none of the instrument editing parameters like tuning, muffling, shell depth, mic position or transient controls will affect the incoming audio. Presumably the samples would need to be in the module in order to use these features. Instead, this audio is essentially live streaming into the module. But other modeling type features such as the overheads and room ambiences are fully functional with this method, and these actually make up quite a large part of that overall Roland sound character. On top of this, the various pad, master and multi effects all work on the incoming audio as well. My thinking is, and again, I don't know for certain, pinch of salt, etc. It's probably because all of these effects basically work through DSP, digital signal processing. And I presume that the other instrument level settings are actually manipulating the samples themselves. Hey, ever wondered what other modules might sound like if they were made by Roland? This is really fun to play with and it's opened my eyes to what could be possible in the future with Roland modules. I have no idea what Roland are planning next, they bought DW a while back, so they have the DWE kit along with the Soundworks software, they might put Soundworks or a version of Soundworks into their V-Drums modules, they might stick with the approach that they're already using with entirely different samples, or maybe they'll do a combination of all of that, I've got no idea. But it would be a big step and it would surprise me if they moved away from this parameter tweaking modelling approach entirely. They've used it for a long time and even if not everybody likes it, it is functionally different to the VST approach that they've now already got covered with the DWE kit. Running different samples through the various onboard effects has shown me that there's still some merit to this approach. Some of them sound pretty realistic. On the other hand, you could still make them sound bombastic and larger than life if you want to. You can do things that are just plain impossible with real overhead and room mic recordings like 
remove certain instruments entirely. Or apply filters to drums on the way into the virtual overhead and room mics. I'm aware that with VSTs you can do a lot of this kind of processing and remove bleed and things like that with the samples and of course you can add various effects. However you can't completely swap out the overhead and room microphones or the environment, at least not without them being recorded with multiple sets of microphones or recorded multiple times in different locations. Some libraries do do this, I'm aware, but most don't, and including all of those extra samples in the library will use a lot more space. Using modelled microphones lets you customise the kit's environments quickly, while still retaining the core drum sound that you're using. Of course, a downside is that these modelling techniques are just affecting the signal of the direct mic drums. It's not a different microphone picking up the same sound source from a different location in a room. But that trade-off gives you a lot of flexibility. If the next generation of Roland modules have more onboard space for sounds and a more diverse multi-layered sample pool for realism, this approach could still work really well, especially if the rest of the editing parameters were still intact. Now is this feature worth going out and buying a TD50X for? If you're not already in the market for an expensive module, I'm not quite so sure. If you're already running VSTs and you have a decent computer, this might not really be offering you much. And although you can send different audio sources into the module, which is really cool, you probably don't need to run vocals or guitar through a two grand drum module just to achieve these effects. On the other hand, if you already want or have a TD50X and you're open to using VSTs alongside it, this feature lets you try out different virtual rooms, EQ, compression and various effects really quickly in real time with simple tactile controls. If your computer struggles to run additional plugins or effects on top of your VSTs without introducing latency or clicks and pops, this is a fun solution that doesn't involve replacing or upgrading your PC or Mac. The effects are all being handled by the module, kind of like an outboard effect processor. But this isn't a review video, it's just interesting to hear what's possible while still using Roland's sort of sound design approach. I also hope this feature gets included on all Roland modules in the future. It's really fun to play around with and it would be great if more people could access it. If you've sat here watching this video and your mind is spinning because you're not even sure what, say, EQ does, I've got a tutorial series called How to Make Roland Drums Sound Better. Go check out this pad EQ video first, then follow it up with the others. Or if you want someone else to take care of the tweaking for you, check out my store over at theedrumworkshop.com for new kits and samples for your electronic drum module. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!